So we rolled into the Bailey's Trail System at the Chanty Trailhead on our loaded bikes. The Bailey's Trail System is in the Wayne National Forest, which is kind of a patchwork of public lands in the foothills of Appalachia. Uh, the biggest town nearby you might know is Athens, where Ohio University is. There are 54 miles of completed machine-built, flowy, fast trails with another 30 miles on the way. There's another trailhead and a third trailhead that is being built as well. This is a part two video, so we are bike packing. We had already come through Stroud's Run, had lunch in Athens, and then hit these trails. So a link will, to, it will be in the description to that other video. We decided to take the shortest route through the trails to get to where we were camping, which was called Benton on the Baileys. More on that soon. Um, this being an extensive trail system with loops on loops and gravel roads that cut through, uh, you will definitely want to look at a map or plan your rides before you head here. Luckily, we had our own personal map with us, which was Dylan. He's ridden these trails enough that he knew where to go. And that made it really nice and easy. So especially for a first timer, it was really, really nice. So yeah, we decided we would get to our campsite and then set up camp and then do a little more riding or decided what we felt like doing with the rest of our day. As you can see, this ride, even on the loaded bikes to the campsite is just awesome. You know, you're just able to really um, get going. It's the kind of trails, or at least this one was, that you can just basically, it's as difficult as you want to make it because it's as difficult as as fast as you pedal your bike or bomb the hills. It's definitely deceiving the elevation here. Um, it was over a thousand feet per 10 miles the way we were riding or the spaces, the places we went to. But none of the climbs that we had done over the two days of you know, hitting these trails were extremely long or drawn out. It's just kind of a constant undulation where you climb for a while, then you get a bomb some, then climb for a while, then get a bomb some. So you actually don't realize how much you are climbing until you kind of look at the stats or just realize how tired you've become, <laughs> which definitely wore on me over the two days where I realized, man, we have done a lot of climbing, even though it never necessarily felt like we were doing a lot of climbing. This trail in particular was very smooth. I mean, I would say it's even gravel bike friendly. I was still glad I was on the Gunner Rock Tour. Um, it's a better bike packing bike and stuff like that, but the 55s are just nice to smooth out the bumps. There are rocky sections in the little drainage um, areas. They're usually pretty flat and smooth, but they kind of can be, as you'll see here, like you kind of dip down real steep and then bounce back up. So yeah. Definitely, um, I'm, I always like mountain biking on the Gunner now. And the Gunner actually handles really well with a load. Even though my um, system might not be the best for mountain biking with the front panniers, I do put a couple extra of those uh, modal infinity tools I've talked about before on there to hold them tighter to the sides to make it better. Dylan and uh, Devin had packed their bikes much lighter and much more efficiently with the frame bags and stuff like that. So they were able to mountain bike a lot, I think, just more naturally than I was with the way the bike was set up. Um, those guys are much better mountain bikers than me, no matter what. But here we um, broke off the trail and out onto the gravel road. Uh, we had like a really fun, fast gravel descent to get down to where our campsite was. But then where we were camping, out of the base of where this private campground was, was this super steep gravel climb. I did not make it up there on my loaded bike. And it would be a challenge on an unloaded bike. I think on day two, Dylan made it up there. But the host is actually really awesome. He'll actually shuttle you up there and he shuttled our firewood up there for us. So as you can see, oh, there's the firewood. We got camp set up and then we headed back out. Um, it was really nice to be on the unloaded bikes as it always is after you've been riding a loaded bike all day. But we kind of hit the road past these couple houses, this little area of private land in the Wayne National Forest. And then Dylan knew where to take us to jump back on a trail. So making this gas station run for more supplies, we were actually able to single track it out there, which is just so fun. That's just not really an experience. I get where I live where you can ride single track to go pick up um, supplies you need and stuff like that when you're out camping. So pretty cool. Um, I know me and Ed wanted to grab a couple beers and we all wanted to grab some more water and a little bit of food and all that kind of stuff. And this trail that took us there was actually one of my favorites of the trip. 
there were just some really cool parts where you could really get moving. You did have to be uh, careful in some spots. You were on the edge of a ravine. There were some tight curves where you definitely, if you didn't know the trails like I didn't, um, had to make sure you moderated your speed a little bit to know what was coming up. These would definitely be the kind of trails that are a lot of fun once you've done them a couple times and have a little more knowledge. There were some tough fits of this trail too. Uh, this curve, you know, of course the GoPro doesn't make it look like that, but was super yeah. steep and sharp. Neither me or Ed made it around. Uh, I think Dylan and Devin made it around with almost no problem. Coming up here, I could see where there was a curve and there's a skid mark going off the side of the trail. So someone came real close to hitting a tree, uh, you know, as can happen. Uh, thank God we didn't. And then there were some uh, rocky sections on this trail, some rock features. Um, there wasn't anything that if I was prepared for, I couldn't have rolled over, but there was a couple times I stopped and needed to take a look at it. So, yeah. You know just my experience level i think if you're riding a hardtail or you're really good at mountain biking it wouldn't have even affected you at all so yeah i thought this trail was rated a little harder than it actually was but again like that i said that elevation is deceiving it is a lot of up and down this was a 10 mile ride to the gas station and again i think we were at a thousand feet even with riding a little bit of gravel road and the road in and out of town for those of you who do like stuff that's more challenging and more technical the next 30 miles of trail is being built by people who are renowned trail builders the name was told to me it doesn't mean anything to me because that's not my world it didn't stick but these are going to be the more challenging trails the full suspension bike trails from what i understand i guess the plan is to put more of the rock features built into the trails and then cut them steeper in and out of the ravines so they are really pushing to make this area a destination and the next 30 miles of trail and trailhead is supposed to be a big part of that drawing people beyond from just ohio in the region right now i think it's totally worth getting out here but i think i could see how this will have a huge effect once they do get those extra challenging trails built and put into here you know it's one of those things where they're hoping to revive the community which makes a lot of sense you know you look at these small towns where we're eating at this picnic table out of gas station you know you know pretty soon there's going to be a brewery some of these houses are going to be airbnbs and it's just this great way to use the outdoors to revitalize things we decided to take the gravel roads mostly back to camp um, we were all pretty cooked from a day at stroud's run uh, the bike trail and then you know even the mountain biking we did as i always say you know just that up and down with loaded bikes can be exhausting so again on this campsite being up in this hill really cool they also have a cabin up on this hill that looked like an awesome place to stay if you have a four-wheel drive, you'd be able to drive your car up to that cabin. Um, but one of the most surprising things is getting down to where the house is, is where the showers and the bathrooms are. Two completely private bathrooms that are full running water. I mean, they look like hotel bathrooms. I actually filmed it just to be able to show it to you here because I was so impressed. You know, I don't have a problem with a state park shower house or anything like that, but to have your own private bathroom, um, especially, you know, we were riding on these 90 degree days, so you did want to shower, but he had clean towels, a dirty towel pile. Um, there was shampoo and soap that people had left behind. So in case you had forgot yours, there were bottles there. I was just super impressed with this. So again, this is Benton on the Baileys. Look up their website. They're also on Hip Camp. I'm not sure who they reserved the cabins through, but they have the links on their website. So just do that quick Googling. Um, so after that, you know, the next day we got our bikes loaded back up, hit the trails again, a different one. Again, just a trail that was absolutely yeah, sure awesome uh, no, here you I'm can see i am fast, checking right. out one of the rock features that i wasn't sure if i wanted to hit but you know i'm on inspection i'm like oh if i knew what i was doing i could have hit that trail just a couple of other things to note that i was told about the trail system that i forgot to look up that you should check out i believe they are fully closed in the winter so there's no riding here in the winter the trails are both directions because like I said before they're loops and loops on top of each other so to make them one way is just not practical uh, so you do have to look out for other riders and you know yield the trail you know depending on group size or whatever happens to make sense and then I guess in the fall there are certain um, weekends where there are it's hunting season and there's conflicts and some of the trails are closed or you shouldn't be riding them so definitely look into that 
before you go if you plan to head out there in the fall. Uh, I was telling Aaron and Ben about these trails, uh, my two normal riding companions, and was saying it's almost like a bummer that the season is kind of winding down because this is somewhere I want them to see. And as mentioned, I would love to do the thing where I got to Benton on the Baileys, set up camp, and then just spent a day exploring, well, two days, like all the trails. So I get to see every trail out here, you know, even riding some of the gravel. Now, there really is something for everybody here. You can just really mix it up as much as you want. Uh, like I said, so easy to drive into Athens, or it's really easy to ride your bike into Athens. But for those of you who really like to just show up with your mountain bike and only do mountain biking, plenty of places to resupply. Just getting right into Athens to hit the three three breweries i believe are there the different restaurants you know just a you know athens is a college town it's got anything you're going to need that was our midday plan again on this day like we did on the first one we headed out on the roads after hitting the trails out to them and then got on the hawking and adina bike path again after of course a little loop because the trailhead at chancy has a pump track kind of an old school one but still they're always fun why not hit it so out on the adena trail and i like i said i think we were about 10 miles on there um well this is actually some gravel cut we took to avoid what uh, they were saying is more of a busy road i didn't get to see it for myself but the cool thing is they are working on a bridge that'll get you from the bike trail to the chauncey trailhead over the river and all that so eventually you won't have to go on roads at all to connect this all up with the bike path and the two trail systems so yeah like i'm saying this i really do believe they're doing a good job and this will be a destination and and i just think more amenities will appear uh, over time and make it just a better uh destination blah 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 said the same guy. thing twice anyways <laughs> little stop to pet the donkeys along the way you know got to get that donk content in here before heading back out onto the trails. And again, like, that's why I mean there's something for everyone. You could really ride this bike path between Athens and Nelsonville if that's all you wanted to do. If you're more into gravel roads, you could hit the gravel roads and then just dip your toes into Bailey's, but, you know, or you could do what we did, just a little bit and mix of everything. So here we are coming back into Athens. Athens is super hilly, so there's some hills to bomb, there's some hills to climb uh, as you get in and out of the city. Okay. We went to a place for lunch called Nueva Casa. Casa Nueva, that was really good. Obviously Mexican uh, food. They did have breakfast style Mexican food too, which is kind of cool. Uh, good beer on tap, local beer, all that stuff. Then we bounced over to a coffee shop for, um, well, I had some sweets and some of the guys had some coffees before we got going again. We are able to pick up the trails right on the outskirts of like a residential area of Athens. Check my Strava below for everything I'm talking about. Like I said, I can't remember the names of all these trails or exactly where you pick them up uh, off the top of my head, but I do have all those maps linked below. So use that if the way we did things are interesting to you. Uh, that's right, before we did pop back onto the mountain bike trails we had to do a quick skate park stop <laughs> so yeah so yeah here's where we climb out of athens back into the trail system and after being on the baileys for a little while i had forgotten uh how really rough uh, strouds is this part technically where we're starting is not strouds runs but it looks like there's a couple nature preserves that are all kind of linked together so where the borders are on that again just it doesn't really matter but i would definitely look at a map to know where to go not all the trails are bike friendly back here there's some horse trails and some that are just hiking trails but it all feels like hiking trails we rode the ones you're allowed to ride them but they all feel like hiking trails really you could see how there's these sandstone ledges and how narrow this thing track is i mean the vegetation has grown up over you and everything so it's tiring you're going up and over roots and rocks but the payoff is just how pretty it is you know it's kind oh, of like yeah. a ride in the woods but there are still some redeeming sections where you could get up some speed and really enjoy it uh, the more skilled you are i think the more you'll enjoy this people's views on this are obviously you know some people really like the rough old school technical stuff like we have here in ohio west branch very similar to west branch i also compared it in the last video to parts of the north country trail the nct that i rode bikepacking over fourth of july um, we were near traverse city i'm sure that that's a very varied trail, but where we were, it had a lot of these vibes. Here's a little spur we broke off on that Dylan knew about to check out this 
big um uh, it's not technically a cave because i've read the sign but overhang this giant uh, rock and then this section up here we're just like kind of bombing along this cool ridge line uh as always the gopro really doesn't show how scenic it is from side to side especially in the summer with all the greenery that camera just doesn't uh, give you that view um, this side of the lake we came to on the way back uh, was much after we got out of that Athens area and like the sandstone area becomes much actually faster and flowier. So the last few miles of the ride was a lot of fun as well. Um, again, like I said, I didn't hate the other sections, but they're just, it's a different experience. And then here we are back at the dam that creates the big lake here. A quick bomb down the dam and our two days were over. I was exhausted. I think only, you know, like 60, 70 miles all together, but just very, very climby profile. Uh, totally worth it. Loved it. Um, thanks as always for watching. Uh, check out our little swag store below if you want to support the channel. T-shirts, oh, bandanas, yeah. stickers, and all of that. I appreciate it all, and I will see you in the next video.